everyone, I hope you're all doing well, and it's great to see you all watching today, as Reality Based presents the creator origins of John De La Raz. So I hope you all enjoy, or at least find this video informative. But first, for more videos like these, be sure to subscribe, because the truth is Reality Based. The journey of John De La Raz, because you've had Quite the creator journey, my good man. I remember when you were clean shaven and and well looked more like a, an American, which is to say, fat. But uh, yes, I was let's fat. Write, yeah, <laughs> let's write down six minutes and fifty seconds so everyone can catch me saying that. As we ask the first question, which is uh, you getting into not only comics but literature content creation, and live streaming. Take it away. Oh, is he gone? <laughs> or am I gone? My my internet's not cooperating very well right oh, now. I don't no. know why, Bob. So apologies, Chad. No, it's fine. Um, fine. I'll have so, it. So uh, uh, I've, I've always been into writing uh, since mm -hmm. I was a kid. And uh, it took me about 10 plus years to kind of get my first novel done, which ended up being The Stars and Twine. Uh, which I got to say is uh, if you guys want to just check that out, that's 99 cents through the weekend on Amazon for us. It's really easy to get, grab an ebook on that. And uh, I don't know what that translates to in pounds, but I think it's on sale in, in Amazon UK also. Um, and so I wrote that originally like it was, uh, you know, Deep Space Nine went off the air. Uh, do if you remember Deep Space Nine? Yes. I'm yes. only 24, but I've. I've watched plenty of of Deep Space Nine on on repeat. Yeah, it was mm. excellent, and uh, and I just kind of always dreamed, kind of like of what you know, space station with with cool stuff mm. like that. And so I kind of decided to make my own. Didn't really have a good direction for it, and so mm. I wrote things uh, not very well. Uh, and I, I don't even think I have my first draft of it uh, at this point. I did it on. I, I was doing it by hand at the time. Uh, I don't oh. know why. Yeah, I had a computer. I was just doing it by hand. Uh, and then eventually I, I uploaded the computer, kept it going. And and what I do is like I got a job uh, in finance and I was working in finance. And like anytime I got a break, I'd just kind of like knock out a few words here and there. And uh, I was writing that for a long, long time. Finally, one one day I finished it. I think it was 2010. Mm -hmm. And I was very excited, uh, showed some of my friends and some of my friends went. <sighs> And uh, and I was like, oh, God. Uh, and so I, I completely rewrote it from scratch. It took mm -hmm. me two years to rewrite it from scratch. <laughs> and uh, and what I did was like w when you first do things, you kind of don't know when you're making aliens and things like that. Yeah. You know, uh, and you watch a lot of TV like Star Trek, the TV aliens like Star Trek. They're, they're just people with some prosthetic ears on. You know, it's not as they're not they don't feel like real aliens. And when you want to get into a book where you don't have like that budget where you have to like make costumes and stuff like that, you, mm. you need to give a little more meat on the bone. So I had to, I had to rework my aliens, rework, uh, rework everything from scratch. And once I did that, the aliens acted a certain way. So then the plot had to change a certain way, et cetera, et cetera. And, mm. uh, and once I came up with some pretty cool aliens, I thought, um, which the concept is, uh, they're, they're, they're like a herd, uh, sort of evolution, uh, where, mm -hmm. They, they, they empathically bond with a group. And, and the thought is that like, uh, their, their planet's very turbulent with like big storms. And so, mm -hmm. uh, they, they go, they, it's kind of their warning system to each other to go hide in the caves when the big storms come out. And that's how they, they bond with each other. Ooh. And on top of that, like they get a more, uh, specific bond when they, uh, you know, uh, copulate. And, uh, and then, uh, they, they bond for life. So, uh, th these are aliens that cannot fornicate. Uh, as, as oh my man. yes oh my so that was i was making many yeah <laughs> i was making many connotations then between your aliens hurricane katrina and uh african americans but i can be very controversial when i want to <laughs> oh, be geez. John. but then but then you said the last thing and i'm like no nope, yes completely different, <laughs> completely different. but uh, so but, did yeah. that and uh and once i reworked it the story was really nice i i worked mm -hmm. with this editor um named bethany and she as mm -hmm. is at a big publishing house now i uh, did mm -hmm. a great job on it fixed it uh and then i got a i was not confident because it was my first book still so i got a second editor and then i fixed it and i actually do that process now actually i work with two editors every single book and my thought is uh you know what if 
if one person doesn't catch something, the other will catch something. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I try I try to give get people from different perspectives and, and figure that out just so that mm -hmm. I have a very clean book when it comes out. And uh, that, yeah, like I said, took 10 years to write the first version, two years to write the second, a couple years to get it edited and revise it again. And suddenly I had a book done. Uh, during that time, uh, I also got mad at DC Comics, uh, uh, like like many people do. Uh, <laughs> and I was mad they've that been they, around, they had a Batgirl. They've been around yeah. for like nearly a century. I'm sure they've pissed quite a yeah. few people off. Quite a lot of people time. off. Now nobody's reading them, so they've pissed a lot of people <laughs> off. But I was mad that they canceled this book, uh, Batgirl, at the time. Uh, and they, they had it uh, where Barbara Gordon was in a wheelchair from The Killing Joke, Alan Moore's thing mm -hmm. where he, you know, broke her legs and stuff. And she was training a new Batgirl. Uh, and it, it was kind of nice. Like, so she was like the intelligent person behind the scenes, like operating things. And this gal, Stephanie Brown, who Chuck Dixon created back in the 80s, like got the back, Batgirl mantle and was, was following up. And it was really nicely done. Uh, and mm -hmm. it was actually the writer of it wrote the Smallville TV show. So he's really good with like that interpersonal mm -hmm. relationship stuff. And and uh, I loved Smallville also. And so I was very happy with this. And I'm like, I'm loving this book for like two, three years. I'm like, this is amazing. Best book I've read in a long, long time. And they canceled it and then reset mm -hmm. things so that Barbara is back in the in, and then had Gail Simone write it. And I was like, <laughs> screw this. <laughs> <laughs> always been dc's biggest problem they're like right. an engine they, they start it up and then it dies and then they start it up again all these boots and reboots and and such a such a convoluted uh thing. and then you feel like a chump because you're like the, no, I, everything just got erased and i just spent like mm. three years and like you know hundreds of dollars reading this book right mm. um so i'm like screw it i'm gonna make my own uh female super girl uh her name's gonna be meta girl and I, I, I kind of made her a mashup between Supergirl and Batgirl uh, as far as things go. Uh, and uh, I decided to make hers kind of like a romance comic where she's dating a villain under her secret identity but doesn't know it. And that ended up being Flying Sparks. And I was just, I, I was again, had my day job. And mm -hmm. I was just, I would set aside money to buy four or five pages per month uh, from an artist who was working for Dynamite Comics on John Carter and Green Arrow, or not Green, uh, Green Hornet at the time. Oh. And, uh, and so I, I got a top tier guy and I was just doing it four or five pages a month. And I just set those aside and I had no idea what I was going to do. I had this novel done. I had these comics. I was, I had no idea what to do with it. No idea how to sell it or whatever, uh, in both cases. Um, and as I'm writing this stuff, I got, I got some work, uh, writing like some background stuff for some role-playing games, uh, and actually some, uh, tabletop like card games, which like have Ooh. like some story to it. And once that happened, I got hired. There's a game called Star Realms to do a novelization of that card game. And once I got hired for that, that was actually my first book to come out. Uh, and then I suddenly like had a little bit of a following. So once I had a little bit of a following, I yeah, I actually released a different book, uh, which was called For Steam and Country, which is a steampunk fantasy book. And mm -hmm. that book uh, sold 25,000 copies uh, on Amazon. So I suddenly was in business. Yeah. <laughs> and, about uh, a solid and then, start, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And now John is here, there, <laughs> everywhere. And somehow he's on reality based. I don't know how I did it. Yeah. I really don't. But in well, regards you're, to you're a nice guy, is how you did it. That's, you well, know, I yeah. try my best to be. I know how cutthroat yeah. the comics industry is, whether it's in the <laughs> mainstream or the alternatives. And in regards to content creation and live streaming, it's like dancing through a minefield. It, as soon as you step in the wrong place, dance in the wrong way, you are fucked, especially for someone <laughs> like me who really can't take the heat. But from your first video on, on record, it, it's funny, John, because your first live stream is older than your first video. It's not often we get that with a guest. But uh, your first video was oh, talking geez, about the you? most recent Orville episode. This was way back. Uh, six years ago now, November the sixth, twenty seventeen. Remember the old go look at this. Hold on, <laughs> I have no idea. I wow. Think you, I, 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 were you in a car or were you I make a video? One of those. Uh, oh, how do I go? How do I go all the way to the end? I like to look at like the first videos. Don't they have how like the find, old? How did you find this? I, I I went on to your YouTube page. They have like these sections. Uh, newest. Okay. Most popular and oldest. I went Videos. straight to the oldest. Oh, you have oldest. Oh, I yeah. didn't know there was an oldest button. Oh my gosh, I'm yeah, really they, fat. They recently wow. added that 
same with with live stream. I don't bother checking people's shorts because I fucking hate shorts. But uh, yeah, yeah, you've been around for a while, my good man. I should and, delete and... these. These are cringe. Oh my god. <laughs> um. oh, all the more reason to keep a record on them. <laughs> oh dear. But uh, there is a noticeable difference. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah, I uh, when I was doing those, um, and yeah, so I mean, once I had books going, eventually like Comics Gate rolled around, and I started crowdfunding, and that's how I released the comic finally too. But mm. that's the story of that. Now for videos, like I actually these were not pre-recorded videos. Uh, what there was at the time mm -hmm. back in the internet lore, my friends, uh, oh. is Twitter had a live streaming thing called Periscope. Ooh. and uh periscope was and i i started doing that on on there because who there were two people very popular on periscope it was uh, scott adams and uh who you might be familiar with and mm -hmm. uh and mike cernovich and they were very popular on periscope so i'm so i i was ignoring youtube at the time like had no idea and was started just streaming those at some point streaming those i think i learned i could record them to my phone Mm -hmm. And then I learned that I could just like upload them to YouTube by pressing a button. And I was like, oh, OK, I'll just I'll just re-upload it to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it looks like I did that uh, for a year, two years, mm -hmm. three years. Oh. <laughs> and then and then I started then I actually gra started making uh, content in my house or my uh, my office here about mm -hmm. uh, after a couple of years of that. And I didn't do that much. I really didn't start YouTubing for real until the pandemic, which I regret because mm -hmm. that was kind of the way uh, the way to get a bigger following for for mm -hmm. real. Uh, I uh, oops. <laughs> no, no, uh, the yeah. pandemic ne nearly drove me to insanity. I mean, a good good mm -hmm. year, year and a half in the UK. You had a simple choice: get shot or get shot. And somehow I avoided both of them. But uh, yes, I started to speak my mind my first video the second run started on october the 28th 2021 talked about a local bus strike that's that's how all this started and it's evolved into reality based and i try my best to get on with everyone and i found that if you if you don't threaten people's financial livelihood everyone's going to like you even if you're an annoying offensive bastard like me. <laughs> um the offensive thing is reality based i i got it wrong john i uh i started off with my real name instead of my creator name and then mm. uh, i came up with reality based uh over a year ago now it's not one, it's not one term it's supposed to be reality on top of based because I believe in reality, and I try to be based in doing so. So that's that's the twist of nice. of words. But I'd say, uh, w what's your secret in regards to looking, you know, seven years younger instead of seven years older? Because I'm 24. I want to know your your tips for for looking younger. Because you look younger today, John, than you did seven years ago in 2016. So so what's your secret? Yeah. All my people make fun of me for this, but it's actually diet and exercise. Uh, <laughs> and so I I go to the gym uh, two to three times a week and I play tennis one to two times a week, which is like, a, you know, a, a tennis match. If you guys don't know is about it's the equivalent of running about 12 miles. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's a lot of a uh, lot of exertion there. So I do that. And I also uh, I, yes, I, I, I'm I, I have a, a moisturizer uh, for my face for sure. And then on top of that, I kind of like don't eat red meat. meat, don't eat red meat, don't eat sugars, don't eat a lot of processed carbs and things like that. Ah. Uh, and that just, uh, you know, when you actually mm -hmm. eat the way a human's supposed to eat, uh, it, en it ends up, uh, you feel mm -hmm. better, you look better. And that's just kind of how it goes. Well, it, it's funny that uh, Shifter men mentions filters. Oh, because StreamYard, <laughs> StreamYard actually has a feature in the settings. Does in it? In regards to having like, like a, a filter thing, so you look What's so it your wrinkles don't uh, show up. In fact, I can no I can where. Find Let me see. My... Let's have a look. Settings. It's not audio, of course. It's not fucking audio. Uh, camera. It says touch up my appearance. Wow. New. And I, I, I tested this privately. Um, if you press it, barely anything changes. But if you get close to the camera, it, your wrinkles. Right, your wrinkles 
because I have plenty of wrinkles. Oh. That's why I'm so back. Uh, they they smooth over, so it's like you get the Mitt Romney treatment by uh, by Streamyard. There's an old reference. I just press the button. Can't oh, what can hurt, right? Yeah. Hmm. Wow, there's well, some I, virtual it's, it's, backgrounds too. Yep, yep. Oh wow! Hmm. Look at that. I'm at a tennis court now. Yeah. I I used a green screen once. It uh, it caused black mold and uh, destroyed my voice for a solid month. So. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, I've recently, I've recently been recovering from, uh, you know, a good old cough and and blocked nose, that sort of thing. Still not one hundred percent recovered, but uh, I'm speaking a lot better now. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, that's Reality Based presents the creator origins of John Delaraz, along with a bit of banter, back and forth, and all sorts of shenanigans. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all very much for watching. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, and no one else, bye for now, folks.